Here we are with some late night training. This is a style of training that I'm doing at the moment. Sometimes when I organize my workout, I'll do it in a way that's similar to the way I'll approach a match. So I might start with trying to get chased and creating a pressure that's basically as far outside as I can imagine. So here I have a supinating, rising escape that is going to get my hand as high as possible. Absolutely fantastic pressure for establishing the high hand, for regripping, and for dominating the post. What you're going to see here is kind of the normal amount of work that I will do in a standard training session. So same kind of idea on this next set. Reverse pressure. So that's great for hitting a person's fingers. In a pronating fashion. So really maximizing the rollout. Uh, love this kind of pressure. Right now in my blocks. Everything. Every time I get on the table. I'm trying to do more reps at the same weight. So I've done this style of training for basically ever. I kind of always come back to this kind of training just where uh, it just forces a kind of slow rise in intensity. So here, looking at the post, this is really probably one of your most important exercises. You should, in my opinion, be doing this every single day of your life as an arm wrestler rising always be climbing you can say that a b c always be climbing at any point in any match get your hand higher make the skin slip make them come to you become more efficient who's holding on a who these are ideas that are constant and consistent throughout all arm wrestling and the muscles heal really quick too. Here, I think I'm doing a set of 100. So uh, normally when I do this type of training, at the beginning of the day, I go heavy. And as the day drags on, I'll start to do more volume and uh, higher repetition work. Man, I'm looking huge right here. I eh? like the, the lighting was perfect on this set. I don't know. I, I'm going to have to measure again, but I feel looking at me right here, I feel like my bicep is definitely getting bigger. And yes, uh, as you guys can kind of tell, I am still doing the pumpkin system. So I don't do anything with my left hand. Nothing. Everything I do, <laughs> I'm a right-handed dude. I am a specialist. I am not an all-around athlete anymore. I was. I was for many years. I was an all-around athlete. I could do all sorts of stuff. I did tons of different sports. But as I've gotten older, I've really just focused on arm wrestling and now right-hand arm wrestling. I still arm wrestle left-handed, but it's it's for fun. I'm really pushing with the right. So that kind of puts an end to this evening's uh, outside portion of the circuit. So now we start to move into the meat and potatoes. Start to move into the cupping and more inside portion of the training. Uh, so it is it is kind of the same way I approach a match. Normally, I will start to uh, attack a person's fingers, work mostly on position and extension. And then, uh, and then I'll start to get my wrist involved. And towards the end, I'll start to bring in more and more of my bones. Test your frame. That is the final thing in arm wrestling. And I find when I do those sets later, it kind of reduces my chance of injury as well. Um, on to multi-spinner. This here is really, ah, it's hard to say, but... It's probably my very favorite exercise or, or workout tool, the multi-spinner. I think if I could only do one exercise, it would be multi-spinner, either high or low, depending on who my opponent was. If I've got uh, someone who's more of an inside puller, I'll work uh, multi-spinner low 
and I will just try and beat their shoulder. If you can beat an inside puller's shoulder, it leaves them with very, very little options, um, especially if they're a flopper. When I was training to beat Jerry, this was probably my number one exercise that I really focused on. Multi-spinner low cup uh, forces you to commit your shoulder and keep uh, good hand position throughout the process. So it's a real uh, it's a real test your frame type of move. And yeah, good times training late at night. You know, uh, cupinator. To me, this is kind of your super generic wrist trainer. Uh, I do like multi-spin, but just to get a full, even wrist attack, it's really hard to beat a cupinator, uh, especially the way it it puts the pressure right in, right all the way out into your fingertips. It feels just like you're pulling in a strap, um, really isolating that that wrist flexion part of of the game. So now I'm starting to get that full, uh, you know, arm wrestling stimulus before I go to bed. I've basically touched on most of the vectors in arm wrestling and we'll finish it off with a little bit of test your frame, get right in there. So when I do side pressure training, I'm really not doing a lot of side. I'm trying to get as far behind it with my shoulders possible so everything's lined up here i'm doing a supinating version of uh of pressing so uh, this this is all important stuff and you can see before i go to bed i've done the full spectrum from all the way outside making a person chase me and climb my hand through the middle and all the way in My favorite exercises uh, with the different diameters of, uh, of dumbbells and barbells. So talking normal, normal diameter. So stuff that you see in a gym, like all around the world, stuff with about a grip this thick. Uh, my favorite lifts to do with, with these types of, uh, these type of tools, hammers on a preacher it's probably probably one of the best things you can have as an arm wrestler is this hammer strength position uh, keep your arm nice and close to your body and follow it down okay and come up when you do the lift focus on keeping your hand high and your angle tight make sure that you go you see a lot of people kind of not going down all the way but what's going to happen is um, it's, it's hard to measure exactly what you did unless you cross that kind of uh, perpendicular to, to gravity or, you know, where gravity can really have the most effect on your bicep. So stay, stay tight, keep your angle high, cross the 90 degree point and come back up. And... When you start to get too heavy, you're gonna notice that this is gonna to start to fail, okay? And that's when you can hurt yourself doing the lift. So, uh, great lift, great for developing that, you know, straight back posting pressure, which is so dangerous in arm wrestling. Uh, next thing I like to do with standard, standard dumbbells or barbells is just, just grip work. I've never been a fan of grippers too much just because I don't like that they squish into your own hand. I'd rather just work with my fingers. So, you know, just really simple. Just very, very simple. Just do grip work. Okay, like that. Or, I want to do barbell. You know, just let it roll down. And I find that this kind of grip training is uh, is way better than your standard grippers. Uh, more measurable and 
Uh, it doesn't push back into your own hand. I think it's I think it's a bit more functional, just my opinion. So when you're in the gym and you have these normal dumbbells, one of the first things that you want to do as an arm wrestler is, is thicken them up. Uh, that, that increased diameter is going to put more stress on your wrist for different lifts that you're going to do. Obviously, there's a ton of lifts you can do with all these tools. I'm just showing you my favorite ones. So, start to move into thicker grips. Uh, I've got some custom stuff I use. This is, I think, about a two inch diameter. Uh, this might be, this might be between like a three and a half or so diameter. Um, and here's a longer one. And I think that this is a, a three inch diameter bar. I've used, I've used these, these tools for all sorts of stuff throughout the years. A lot of people don't have access to this stuff. So you can get a lot of things. You can, you can just get a piece of plastic uh, to slip over uh, when you go to the gym uh, just, to, just to make your spin. It's not going to be that good because it's going to slide all around, but it's, it's better than nothing. Uh, some guys get, you know, the thick grips. This one's a, this one's a Manus grip. And just put it over top, of, over top of whatever you're working with to thicken it up. If you don't have these, that's no problem. You can just use regular fabric, okay? And roll it up. Or tape, a lot of people use tape. And once you have it thickened up, it's already gonna start to feel, have a way different feel, and it's gonna start to get more out into your, into your fingers. My favorite lifts to do with these are wrist curls. Um, when I do my wrist curls, uh, there's kind of a sweet spot for the size of the dumbbell that you want to use. The bigger the diameter, the more you're going to have tie-in to your fingers. Uh, it's going to start to hit your wrist right away as soon as you start doing wrist curls, but the increase in diameter is going to hit your fingers more and more. Standard wrist curl looks like this. So when I come in, I really bunch up my fingers to make it to make it tight, okay? As tight as I can. Make that pocket, pull it up. I rest it kind of like a 90 degree position. Like my arm is kind of like where I would be at the arm wrestling table. And I'm just gonna do my curls from here. So that's a two inch about. So it's got, you know, pretty good exclusivity on the wrist. Switch to a four. And there's gonna be way more finger tie-in, okay? So I'm gonna feel the pressure quite a bit further out. If I move to, uh, if I get something longer, like a barbell kind of thing, you can get pieces of steel. The best place to get steel is from junkyards. Junkyards, scrap metal yards, uh, the best place to get, you know, cheaper steel to work with. And just do one arm deadlifts, okay? So get in, your, get in the spot where just, you're really just testing uh, your one RM. Just get locked in and lift, lift, lift. So that's really my favorite exercise with barbells, dumbbells, hammer, wrist curls, grip work, one arm deadlift. Super simple.